Welcome. We've been hearing a lot in the news recently about the new data that proves that there's been no warming in the last decade, and yet other reports that global warming has stopped since 1997 or 1998. The most often cited article is from the Daily Mail by David Rose, entitled Forget Global Warming, It's the Solar Cycle 25 that you need to worry about. It is claiming that the River Thames will be freezing over soon. Last time that happened in the heart of London, it was nearly 200 years ago. That's how cold the article claims it will be getting. It goes on to explain to us that it is the sun that we must be worrying about. Our local star is plunging into another Maunda minimum, a time of low solar activity that corresponded to a series of very cold winters in Western Europe and the Eastern United States back in the 17th century. So the onset of a new ice age is apparently heading our way, according to Mr. Rose. The article gave no source of references for these papers. This is the Daily Mail, after all. So I checked the Met Office, the CRU and Hadley Centre websites for copies of these papers and found nothing. As for the claim that there is a 92% chance that the next solar cycle, solar cycle 25, and the subsequent cycles will be abnormally low, the Met Office makes no such claim. This claim is based on a forecast dating back to 2006 by David Hathaway from the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. At the time, Hathaway predicted that cycle 24, the one we are currently experiencing, would have a peak smooth sunspot number of between 140 and 180, and would occur in 2010. In his latest forecast, it will now be between 60 and 130, note the increase in the uncertainty, and it will peak in 2014. There are over 80 such forecasts by so-called solar experts for solar cycle 24, and none of them were right. Not one. They all predicted that the solar cycle maximum would already have passed by now. So any prediction that you hear for the intensity or timing of an upcoming solar cycle, even the current one, are generally nonsense. But what has happened to cause the sudden barrage of claims that global warming is no more? Is it true? How did they come by such a conclusion? But it seems what actually happened was that NOAA, NASA, GIS and the UK Met Office released their independent climate summaries for 2011. The numbers showed that 2011 was somewhere between the 9th and 12th warmest year on record, depending on which statistical analysis method you use. This is the plot that David Rose showed in his article. Now if you draw a line from 1997 to 2011 it's pretty much flat, which is where they get the claim there's been no warming since 1997 but that ignores all the years in between. For example, if you choose 1998 as the start date and 2011 as the end date, you get a strong cooling trend. However, if you choose 1996 or 1999 as the start date and 2010 as the end date, you get a strong warming trend. All we conclude is that the results from such type of analysis are wholly dependent on where you start and where you stop. The cooling in the last decade argument rests on the same shaky foundation. As I predicted in my video that I posted on the 11th of December 2010, entitled No Warming Since 1995, Cooling Since 1998, they are now starting to use 2002 as a starting point in their analyses of this type, because it's a strong warming year. Choosing convenient starting and stop dates is called cherry picking the data. Here I've replotted the data using the NOAA value. It is similar in many ways, but you will note that on this version, 2005 and 2010 are warmer than 1998, which is now generally considered to be the case. But let's do the plot honestly and show the proper range. Here I'm going to plot the last 20 years worth of data and have the scale start at zero, not some arbitrary number that is designed to confuse the eye as the Daily Mail article does. Here I'm using the convention that red represents an annually average temperature above the 20th century average and blue as below average. Do you see any blue? I don't. All the years here are way above the average temperature. I wonder how far back we'd have to go to find a year that is below average temperature. But it turns out if you look, 1976 was the last year that had an even slightly below average temperature. You also have to remember that the 20th century had at least 30 to 50 years of strong global warming in it, so the average is artificially high. Now a string of years like that could theoretically happen by random chance, as some will argue. 
but if you work it out, that random chance is 1 in 30 billion. However, there must be a mathematical way of doing such an analysis that eliminates the cherry-picking problem. In fact, there are several. I will demonstrate two of them here. First, we take a look at the monthly temperature data. You will notice there is a lot of month-to-month -month and year-to-year -year variation that confuses detecting any upward or downward trend. How can we eliminate all of those and leave us with just the long-term trend? First, we must understand on what time scale these variabilities are. There are three main causes of variability. One is the annual cycles of the Earth, including its orbit. And then there is the El Niño-La Niña cycle, which is about 10 years long, and the solar cycle, which is about 11 years long on average. You can eliminate cyclic behavior by averaging over the periods concerned. Let me first show you how that works. This is a cosine function with a 360 degree periodicity. If I take the average of any 360 consecutive points, the sum is zero. And I'll end up with the black curve that's shown here. But what happens if I get the period slightly wrong, slightly longer or slightly shorter? Well, those are shown by the two colored curves here. You can see that although that they are not perfect, they do reduce the overall cyclic behavior quite considerably, so you can still see a trend. Another effect of smoothing over longer periods is to reduce random errors and noise in the data. Here is a bar chart showing a series of random numbers that I generated between minus 1 and plus 1. I have smoothed over plus or minus 50 samples either side of each data point, and the resulting smooth data is shown in red. Again, we reduce the noise by a factor of 10 by doing such a smoothing. Now let's apply this to the monthly global temperature anomaly data. First we'll remove the annual variability by smoothing by a 12 month period. Thus we removed all the effects of the Earth's orbital motions, annual cyclic variations in carbon dioxide, etc. The curve looks far less confusing, but there are some obvious longer term variations in the climate that must be taken into account. So we know that the El Niño-La Niña cycle is just over 10 years on average. The solar cycle is about 11 years long, though it can vary both in length and intensity by large amounts. As a result, I've decided to smooth the data over a 10-year period. This is the resulting plot. As you can see, after 1970, we have a smoothly rising temperature of about 0.16 degrees per decade. You will also notice that the last point on the curve is the highest. That is the point covering the last 10 years. So, unfortunately, global warming is still alive and well and living with us, or to be more precise, we are living with it. Okay, this is just one analysis, and a very simplified one at that. Can we easily check this result with an alternative analysis? Some years are strong El Niños, i.e. warm Eastern Pacific, coloured here in red. Other years are strong La Niña years, coloured in blue, while the rest are neutral years. If we analyze the data separately, then we should expect all of these to produce the similar sort of uh, rate of increase in temperature, just offset from one another. And the result should be similar to that of the smoothing technique that I just described. So I've divided the data into three individual parts. Those with a southern oscillation index of greater than 0.5 are called La Nina years. Those with an SOI of less than minus 0.5 I've designated El Niño years, and the rest are neutral years. Then I use a linear least squares fitting routine to determine the slope of each trend line. Here's the plot for the El Niño years. It shows a consistent upward trend of about 0.14 degrees per decade. Next we have the ENSO neutral years. This also has an upward slope of about 0.14 degrees per decade. Last we have the La Niña years. Again we have a positive slope, but this time it's 0.17 degrees per decade. The last point on this plot is 2011, and note again it is the highest in the graph. This shows that the process of global warming is continuing even in La Niña years. So let's summarize the results. The smoothing analysis gives us a slope of 0.16 degrees per decade. The El Niño years analysis gives us 0.14 degrees centigrade per decade. The neutral years also gives us the same slope of 0.14 degrees per decade. 
and the Lani New Year's give us a slope of 0.17 degrees per decade. This is a remarkable level of agreement. But are you still a skeptic even after seeing all that evidence? If you don't believe me, get the numbers for yourself and do the analysis. You will get the same result. But what about these additional factors? 2011 was one of the worst years for tornadoes in the US. Extreme drought conditions covered nearly half the United States in 2011. Meanwhile, floods ravaged other areas. 2011 saw more loss of Arctic sea ice, rivaling 2007 in area loss and surpassing it in volume loss. That is, we are losing more and more thick multi-year ice as time goes by. We also see that all the lower levels of the atmosphere are warming. Meanwhile, the stratosphere continues to remain cooler than normal, a unique sign that the culprit is greenhouse gases. According to the Audubon Society, climate zones are moving poleward at a rate of four miles per year. Yes, we've had some snowstorms, but that's what happens in winter. But snow is precipitation. It has little to do with temperature, just requiring that the temperature be below freezing when the precipitation falls. But we have had 24,000 low temperature records in the United States this year. That's a huge number. Does that indicate that global warming is not happening now? Or in fact there's global cooling going on? Well, if there had been cooling, you'd expect the number of low temperature records to exceed the number of high temperature records. Does it? And does it do so significantly? For there to be a significant either heating or cooling trend, the number of high temperature records would either need to be under 23,800 for a cooling climate, or over 24,700 for a warming climate. So how many high temperature records were set in the United States last year? 59,927. So over 70% of the temperature records set last year were high temperature records. This confirms a strong warming trend in the United States. Only a fool or someone with a personal, political or financial motivation would deny that global warming is happening, with this level of evidence facing them. The problem is that this has been facing them for the last decade and still some deny it. Back to the original Daily Mail article. Apparently it is wrong in every basic aspect of its thesis. The world is not cooling and the sun is not careering towards a mo another Monde minimum. The article needs to be retitled, Forget Solar Cycle 25, it's global warming we need to worry about. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.